In this week's video, we're gonna visit one of the largest and best tiny house communities that I've ever seen. The owner is gonna take us on a tour of the community and explain why he focused on creating shared spaces. And finally, we're gonna step inside one of the beautiful renovated vintage trailers that they have on site for nightly rentals. So let's take a tour. Make this house our tiny home. Oh. Hi, I'm Josh. I'm the owner of Tiny Tranquility. We're a tiny home community on the Oregon coast. We've got 43 sites, 35 of which I think are occupied currently by tiny homes, mostly people living here in the park. We do have a handful of folks who are essentially using their tiny home as a beach house. And we also have 10 nightly rentals and then sprinkled in between the tiny homes, we've got several uh, vintage trailers as well. I decided on the park here in Walport, Oregon, which is on the central Oregon coast, it wasn't an accident. I'd been coming down to this stretch of the coast for a number of years with my family and just really have always been in love with the natural beauty of, of this stretch of the coast. The property where the park is located now was the site of a nursery, a large commercial and retail nursery that was in business for decades. It unfortunately went out of business during the last downturn, so in 2012, and really just started falling apart for the next four years or so until I bought it um, from the bank in 2016. When I bought the property, I honestly didn't know what I was going to do with it. I just thought that it would be a great site for something, and I kicked around a bunch of other crazy ideas, maybe even crazier than the tiny home park idea, before I decided that this is really what I wanted to do, that I wanted to create a community here. create the tiny home park, it was almost like a complete redo. I mean, I did repurpose a couple of the buildings, but in terms of the site, none of the infrastructure was usable. So we had to completely scrape, you know, in some cases, two, three feet off of the site um, to, to create the park, put in all the infrastructure, the power, the water, uh, the septic system. I've got a fairly massive septic system with an acre of drain field. But even before the development period, there was about a year of the planning phase where I had to go through a, a very lengthy process with the planning department in Lincoln County to get them to approve the park. I would never say that was an easy process because as I'm sure a lot of tiny home folks have experienced, the local planners really don't know what to do with tiny homes, don't know what to make of them. You know, are they RVs? Are they homes? Do the building codes apply? And so there was plenty of occasions along this journey where well, I didn't think it was going to happen because there was a bunch of derailers along the way and, and we had to navigate our way through those. So technically this is approved by the county and is an RV park so all the tiny homes here have to be on wheels and they've got to be built in conformance with nationally recognized RV standards. In sort of traditional RV parks, I mean, in, in, of course there's a whole spectrum. There's some real nice ones and there's some ones that aren't so nice. But in a lot of them, the RVs are very close to each other. And so when we conceptualized the park and designed the park, instead of sort of packing them in, we wanted to give each site more space than you might find in sort of a traditional RV park. So the whole idea when the park was conceptualized was that if you were going to be in a tiny home, it'd be really nice to have some other spaces, some other areas within the park where you could stretch your legs, get together with people, and really just have some shared space that was much bigger than the space you might have in your tiny home. This is our greenhouse. A whole bunch of different stuff going on in here because it is a 12,000 square foot space. Actually, when we got in the park, this was about a 40,000 square foot greenhouse because again, it was, a, it was a nursery in its prior life. So we contracted it down to about 12,000 square feet. So you can see we've got a mail slot and this is where their package deliveries come. We've also got a little giveaway table that just sort of started up organically. So people, people uh, the stuff which is their downsizing and, and want to get rid of stuff, it goes to the giveaway table first. Over here, we've got our community bikes. Just this past spring, we put in some fitness equipment for use both by the residents, the folks who are living here, as well as our, our nightly guests. We're renting this space out to a glass blower. Um, 
So uh, he's just putting a shop together and uh, hopefully within the next month or two he'll actually start blowing glass and we, we, you know, we've talked about him displaying his work throughout the park as well. I'm hoping that he maybe has classes and stuff like that for people in the community and um, you know, I think we've been, I've been kind of selective about who's going to come in here. It's got to be something that really fits with the community. Some formal storage for the folks who are living here. So if they've downsized from a much bigger space but still need a spot to store some stuff, either in the short term or long term, then we've got that available for them. This is our community garden and we're Helen Denton, who really has done everything in here. I wish I could take credit for, for it, but I can't. She's really made this, uh, this garden space a really awesome space for our, our nightly guests and, and, and the folks living here. Helen has her uh, microgreens business. You can see some of the trays over there called Little Swiss Farms. She's been here since we first opened in July of 2018. And basically, you know, people want to come here and grab some collard greens or some chard or whatever. Um, we do um, ask that they contribute or volunteer in the garden or, um, or make a voluntary donation, which we then put back into the garden. So this is our Doug Fir Lodge. This was a, a storage building for the nursery when we took over the property. The roof had collapsed and really uh, we had to completely revamp the building. So we did a bunch of structural work. We put in three new trusses. Again, this is another, I call it the shared living room. You can see here we've got a wood burning stove with a nice seating area. So people living here and actually the nightly uh, guests have access to free laundry in here. We've got a TV room in here. Um, again, some people uh, don't have a TV within their tiny home, so we wanted to give them the opportunity if they have a, a, a game or a show they, have to, they feel they have to watch, then they do have an opportunity to do that within, within a shared common space. Ping pong pool table, again, available to everybody, a lot of games. And then we've got a little library area over here. So we've got folks who live here contributing their own books to that. Uh, I got a bunch of boxes out of my own attic, um, and again, just a, a, a space where you, people can, can grab a book, take it for a couple weeks, bring it back, contribute their own books. So then this is our, our outdoor space. During the summer, we typically have some more seating out here. This is where we get together for community-wide potlucks. We have two grills that everybody can use, a lot of nice big trees, and just a nice space to come out when the, when the weather's nice and uh, just relax and eat and get together with friends and family. So this is our Redwood Commons. I wanted to have a building that had some ocean views. Some people in their tiny homes don't have an oven, as an example, to be able to cook a turkey or something like that on Thanksgiving. And so we have a fully stocked kitchen up there that anybody in the community or our nightly renter guests can use. All right, well, this is um, the area in Tiny Tranquility where we have most of our nightly rentals. We've, we wanted to congregate them together and put them close to some of our common facilities so they're right next to our Redwood Commons. About a five minute walk to the beach. You know, we're up to about 35 tiny homes here and there's a few that are the same, but by and large, they're all different. And, and I think you'll see that within our, within our nightly rentals as well. This one here we call the Driftwood. The shingles on that tiny home came off an old Masonic Lodge. And then we have some newer tiny homes as well. Just a good variety, I think a good representation of, of what you might see within the tiny home realm, if you will. So we've got a combination of tiny homes and then three vintage trailers. It's sort of a weird combination that you probably don't see very often, but uh, that was really just on me. I really like old vintage trailers. I think aesthetically they're much more beautiful than, than the newer ones. No, no criticism of the newer ones, but I just like the old ones. Wiley and I am one of the owners of Stagecoach and we are in the Dunes which is a 1975 Airstream located right here at Tiny Tranquility Park and is available for nightly rental and Airbnb. So 
we started renovating trailers many, many years ago just for fun. But we had done enough that we actually decided that maybe we should do this for a living. So we got our dealer's license to buy and sell vintage trailers. The owner of Tiny Tranquility actually called us and he said, I'm developing a park. Could you do my trailers for the park? We couldn't believe it. It was just days in from starting our business and the rest is history. Here we are now. So all together, there are four stagecoach trailers here. We saw someone putting a for sale sign on this beautiful Airstream right across the street from our house. And it said $1,000 without no way that's not right. But I made my husband turn around and sure enough, they were duct taping a sign to the exterior of this beautiful trailer. And it said $1,000. So we swooped in and grabbed it that very moment. And here it is at Tiny Tranquility. It was really important that we had a space that anyone could feel at home in to make breakfast, lunch, dinner. So we have a three burner stove, a sink large enough to do dishes for pots and pans, plenty of storage space. We also transformed this area into a twin bed. It's a custom mattress, but we wanted to create a space that could double as a sofa area. So you could put the pillows back here, um, have a seat, watch TV. If you are a family staying in here, there's an extra bed for a guest or children, as well as the main bed up front. On this side of the 1975 Airstream, we have a large bar top that can double as a workspace, whether you're here for vacation or for work, there's plenty of room. We also have a sandy colored laminate flooring that we wanted to put in here to mimic the sandy tones of the Oregon coast. We have really fun maps here of our town of Waldport that have been burned to look like old treasure maps. Just some fun coastal touches throughout. Let me show you the bathroom here in the back. Back here we have a full tile shower with beautiful hexagon tiles. We have a flushing toilet and a beautiful tiny pedestal sink. Up front here, we have the bedroom area and one of the only original features of this vintage trailer because it was in such poor condition when we bought it is this beautiful clock area which is iconic to all airstreams You know, initially we had people and still have people coming here from all over the country, many of whom had never lived in a tiny home before. And so I think, you know, it's evolved quite a bit in terms of the, uh, just the community coming together. I'd say that's not something that I had necessarily put a lot of thought into when I was planning the park. I was so focused on getting the park done. I didn't necessarily think about, okay, what's the playbook for trying to make this a living, breathing community. I, I just sort of assumed and hoped that it would happen organically. And I think initially it, that sort of happened in fits and starts, but now I really feel as though it's, it's coming together like the community that I, I envisioned it would. You know, I've also thought about doing a second park. I don't have any particular plans at this point, but I have looked at a few properties. It seems as though there's, there's really quite a demand for parks of this type. I think if they're done right. I mean, there's plenty of people who want to be, you know, by themselves in their own tiny home, but there's also, I think, a lot of people who like the safety and comfort of having some neighbors and enjoying that community piece as well. Tune in next week as we come back to Tiny Tranquility to take a tour of one resident's unique tiny home. Also, make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week.